Now, welcome everybody back to the channel, and in today's video, let's go ahead and throw away this thing, everybody. Yes, my Airbus joystick. Sorry. Because in today's video, I would like to talk a little bit about this thing again, everybody. Yeah. Now, this is an Xbox gamepad, right? And I would like to use it for flight simulation today. You know, this is supposed to be a little bit of a follow-up video to a video I did like two years ago on using a gamepad for the flight simulator, you know, back when the flight simulator was freshly released. Especially because in that video, my flying with that gamepad wasn't all too successful. All right, a little bit more rudder input. There we go. Literally. Oh. I mean, we touched down once. Pretty much the worst landing I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, not very good. And honestly, I do have to say, at least back then, in 2020, gamepad usage wasn't very well optimized for the flight simulator. But that has changed. Yes, indeed. Microsoft has actually made the whole flight simulator gamepad experience a lot, lot better. Now, that is because the flight simulator was recently released for the Xbox. Yes. And I mean, you know, if you use an Xbox or this flight simulator, the only way you're going to be able to control planes is via this gamepad, which is why they were very much forced to make the whole experience better. And so a lot of you guys wanted me to make a little bit of an update video. Let me go ahead and land some planes here today with this thing. Now, I think the whole experience already starts with a start screen. Now, if you use a gamepad, even if you're on a PC, this is what the cursor is going to look like. You don't even need like a mouse or any keyboard or anything after plugging in your gamepad. You know, this is actually kind of cool. We can press a here and then we can select our runway now yeah i do have to say using a mouse is a lot better but this works you can definitely tell yeah this was made also for xbox now let's go ahead and you know let's go ahead and spawn to santos dumont airport and come in for a landing there and here we go we can just select ready to fly here with this gamepad this actually works quite well now the right joy con you use for you know panning around here the view you can uh, view to the right there's no one sitting next to us. No one can view to the left. Well, this is quite obvious, right? And of course, the left Joy-Con controls the entire aeroplane. So going down, goes down. Kind of like GTA, actually. Pretty much the same thing. It's great to see. Now you control rudder with your shoulder buttons, which is interesting as well. And you control your throttle with A and B. Yes. And this is the thing that I find most annoying is I've tried flying, you know, the, you know, with gamepad a few times now. You really have no proper control of the throttle at all. So that's gonna be a bit of a problem. It just feels so different than, you know, using a proper lever that goes down and up. You know what I mean? It's that this is much better than, uh, than, than A and B, whatever. What is definitely the biggest problem of not being able to use a mouse and only being able to use a, an Xbox controller here is in, in the cockpit. And especially interacting with the switches, in order to do that, you have to first of all press A, and then you can switch it around. Come on. Yes, there we go. This is for the map setting, as you can tell. So let's set it to nav right here and, um, Press B to quit. Yes, indeed, you have to press B to get out of this. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to interact with anything else. That's very much sucks. You have to actually press B first before we can go ahead and do anything else. But anyways, let me try to come in for a landing. And this is where we come to the main controlling part of the planes, which I do have to say, it's not all that bad, honestly. Right, now with this gamepad, you know, the planes have become way much more controllable. Anyways, let me go ahead and now turn on the slew mode right here, which actually with the Xbox controller works very well. We can crash into the cable car. Hello there. Oh, we've actually, we've actually crashed. Now, if I try to come in for a landing now, you put up the landing gear by pressing this arrow button. Now, are the flaps ready? Yes, they are. Let's come in for a bit of a landing indeed. Santos Dumont Airport coming up. Now, we need to get rid of a lot of speed right now. So let's come in and get this plane landed now. Again, pressing the B button to decrease throttle. Thank you. Oh, God. All right. You know what? Okay, never mind. When it comes to the, you know, precision controls, this is a bit different. Now, you keep the B button pressed, I guess, to stop the airplane. Which we're doing right now, reverse thrust. Good. Yes, we are stopping though, somewhat. Please stop now. Stop. Oh God. All right, this is a little bit awkward. Okay, great landing there, Swiss is there one. Good one. Now this wasn't all too successful, but what is for sure is the vibrations in the controller. Of course, this is actually one of the main coolest parts of a you know, controller like this. You know, for example, pulling some interesting maneuvers here on a plane, you know, triggers the vibration on your controller. You cannot hear it very well. Yeah, there we go, this is what I mean. Now, of course, this is kind of another way to measure how hard your landings are, honestly. Yes. Sorry. Now, something else that you can, of course, do is go into the world map and select another plane. Maybe try, try, try to fly the 747. Mm hmm There we go. Right, I mean, the thing about the 747 is that it's pretty much the hardest plane to fly 
in the flight simulator, which I think is interesting. I mean, the real 747, for example, flies very nicely, or so I've heard. Anyway, let me try to land it now down here on this runway. Let me now try to do a smooth landing as well. Come on. Yes, that's been kind of a butter landing. Yes, maybe go ahead and stop on this runway now. This has been all right. Everybody, yes. Good one right here. And of course, vibrations. Not annoying at all. Now on a scale of zero to butter, how butter has this butter been? Very butter. <laughs> I don't know what this video is, but this has actually gone pretty well. Look at that. Yeah. But now, a plane that I would very much like to see perform is uh, the Concorde. You know, what I'm probably going to hate very much about this plane with using it with a controller, especially, is uh, the buttons. You know, the Concorde is known for having a lot of buttons. Now, how do you how do you even move around here in the cockpit? Like, I'm pretty sure you're not even going to be able to download this pretty crazy add-on for the, the Xbox anyway. But I mean, if you were... And that, just that precision right here. I hate that. By the way, I might have just turned off something, but that doesn't matter. Let's let me now try to fly this plane. And let's go ahead and see if the afterburners turn on as well. Yes, here we go, everybody, afterburners. Let's go ahead and uh, breathe the parking brake. And we've already got some vibrations. Shut up! Okay, let's take off. By the way, we're at Gibraltar Airport. This might just get a little bit closer with this runway. The plane doesn't really have a good performance here. Come on, take off. Oh, God. Oh my goodness. Oh, all right. That has been very much close to dying, but here we go. Flying with an Xbox controller. Let's put the landing gear up. Good. And you know what? I'm, I'm not really hating this too much, but I'm kind of scared of doing a landing here. See, the Concord is definitely not easy to land and with the game pad, it's not gonna work out very well. Anyway, all right, we're a little fast, 300 knots, but this is gonna work well. Well, you know what? That's not been all too miserable. Let's go ahead and stop all the way into the brakes now. Come on, stop the airplane. You know what? The setting has actually not been that bad. The stopping has, but that doesn't matter. Right, there we go. Like, you know, I, I had some nice control of this plane. This was not a super hard landing either. This was fine enough. So yes, what have we learned today about this Xbox? Shut up. It's fine. Definitely, if you're super duper poor and can't even afford like the cheapest of joysticks, then buying a gamepad definitely could be an option for you as well. Right, or, or especially if you already have a gamepad flying around, which I guess most people do these this days. This is fine enough. If you do have a bit of spare money though, just immediately invest it in a proper joystick if you want to fly properly. Also, if you're on Xbox, you can buy joysticks for Xbox. It's just very limited, but it's very much necessary as well. I mean, Jesus Christ. Shut up, though. So, yes, everybody, that's using the gamepad for you. It's kind of like, you know, old, dried bread. If you're really hungry, then that will also get you filled up. But will it make you happy? No, it won't. So, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, good night. Now, thank you to all my members here on YouTube, like Mike, Jacob, Tanner, Mubarak, Darren K, Oh Man, The Human, Robbie, Tim, Matt, Sleepy Boy, Calvin, Kelly Chaos, Ryland, Moritz, Jackie Boy, New the York, Shadow, Noah, and Death Rider.